Hi, I'm Blythe Stevens of A Blythe Coach, dance education and coaching to move through life with balance, grace, and power. And today I'm talking a bit about how I use the stories of classical ballets to teach children and beginning adult ballet dancers more about the history and the artistry of classical ballet dancing. It can be fun to teach Sleeping Beauty as we approach springtime and the change of the seasons, as we think about sleep and resting and waiting in the darkness of the metaphorical castle and then emerging back into the light, into new life, into a sense of love and gratitude. And that's one of the values that I like to emphasize when I am sharing Sleeping Beauty is the idea that love can break through the spell, can break through the evil. And that evil was caused by, in a way, a lack of love in the first place because someone was excluded. It can lead into Valentine's Day celebrations, themes of friendship, family, songs about family members, and other love themes themes of waiting and patience, and also related dances that are shared in Sleeping Beauty and other classical ballets, such as the Minuet. It's also fun because Sleeping ba Beauty has two big parties in it, one at the beginning and one at the end of the ballet. And this is one of the highlights that's really fun with younger children is that Sleeping Beauty also includes characters from many other well-known fairy tales, such as Puss in Boots, Little Red Riding Hood, The Bluebird, and The Fairies and Others. So I'm gonna recommend a few resources along the way, including the first book that I'll be sharing from, A Child's Introduction to Ballet, the Stories, Music, and Magic of Classical Dance by Laura Lee, illustrated by Meredith Hamilton. Here, Sleeping Beauty goes like this. Once upon a time, a beautiful princess is born and all the fairies of the kingdom are invited to a grand celebration. A scary old witch named Karabasi storms into the hall. Karabasi is a very, very mad that she wasn't invited to the party. She tells the king and queen that when Aurora, Aurora is 16, she will prick her finger and die. Fortunately, the lilac fairy has not yet given the baby her gift. She can't reverse the evil spell, but she uses her powers to soften it. When Aurora pricks her finger, the lilac fairy says she will not die. She will only fall asleep. When a handsome prince kisses her the good spell, the spell will be broken. After the celebration, the king issues a decree banning every sharp object from the kingdom, and Aurora grows into a beautiful young woman. On her 16th birthday, Aurora and her friends and family gather for a party at the palace. An old woman that Aurora does not recognize offers her a bouquet of flowers. As Aurora admires them, she feels a pinch in her finger. Karabasi has hidden a sharp spindle in the flowers. Immediately, Aurora falls into a deep sleep and so does everybody else in the palace. Many years go by as the entire kingdom sleeps. In a nearby forest, a prince named Florimond is hunting with his friends. The lilac fairy appears and shows Florimond a vision of Aurora. He falls in love at first sight and sets out to find the princess. At long last, he comes to a dark palace overgrown with vines and cobwebs. It seems at first that no one lives in this strange place, but then he notices the beautiful woman of his vision. She is lying in bed as still as death. The prince is overcome with her beauty. He bends down to kiss Aurora, and when he does, she wakes up and the spell is broken. Everybody celebrates at the beautiful wedding of Aurora and Florimond, surrounded by all sorts of magic fairy tale creatures. And of course, everybody lives happily ever after. I love the image from a coloring book of classical ballets where the lilac fairy is present as the prince finds Aurora. Love to share that with young children as an additional resource. It has a, the castle with the cobwebs and the vines and the roses and the dancers in tutus as they would be. 
And as I'm also teaching children in German now, I have been looking into how does Sleeping Beauty appear in German folktales. In German, she's called Dornröschen. And I'm following a book called Mein Buch der schönsten Märchen, an illustrated children's book to help me learn the German versions of these classic fairy tales. But in the German version, initially the king and queen could not have children, and then a frog came out of the water and said that their wish would be fulfilled in a year they would have a daughter. The king and queen don't invite the 13th wise woman or fairy because they only have a set of 12 gold plates. She does cast the same sort of curse, and the 12th fairy who had been skipped does soften the curse. Instead of simply finding a spindle in a bouquet of flowers, falling on a bed in the castle, climbs a staircase while her parents are out and finds an old woman there spinning with a spindle. And she's so enthralled with the action of this instrument, she wants to also try it out. And that's when she picks her finger and she falls asleep up there in the tower and the rest of the kingdom also falls asleep lovely artist's rendition of Sleeping Beauty surrounded by the thorns and roses. Key scenes from the ballet that we can dance with children of all ages and also adults include the initial first scene of Aurora's first birthday or her Aurora's first birthday or her christening where the fairies are present and everyone is giving her their blessings. The next scene being where that celebration takes a turn and there are both good gifts and also a curse. So the curse happens, then the whole palace goes to sleep. And then we have a scene of the prince coming upon the palace and discovering the princess, awakening everyone. And finally, a big celebration of a wedding between the prince Floramund and Aurora, the, our young princess. So it's fun to share the music from some of these variations. For example, of the Puss in Boots and the White Cat or Little Red Riding Hood. And then that can lead into further study of some of the other fairy tales that have become classical ballets. In customary fashion, last week I recorded a bit about how I like to use Sleeping Beauty or Dornröschen with children and adult ballet students. And I did record a bit about how I use music in those lessons as well, but unfortunately uh, the audio didn't quite sync up well. So we're going to try that one again. So for the first scene in the telling of the story for children, or just to set the context, it's a nice sort of entry to the classroom piece of music. I like to use the entrance of the good fairy. So yes, this Sleeping Beauty music is by Tchaikovsky and it's opus 66. And this is Sen Dansant, and it's the entrance of the good fairies. Um, I have a playlist, which I will link in the description of a list of these tracks on Spotify, or you can, of course, find them many other places. Um, but yeah, the opening scene that I like to share with the birth of Princess Aurora and the grand celebration that the king and queen throw for her and then the giving of the gifts and all of that is this entrance of the good fairies or the wise women. And it sounds like this. Sounds benevolent. And yet, if there's more of the story to follow, which is certainly true.
So with children, you could introduce the various fairies and the gifts that they bring, the miraculous gifts that they bestow on Princess Aurora. Or with adult dancers or teens, you could do a plie exercise or a beginning warm-up and stretch exercise. That would be Then the next scene that we'll present will be taking place at the 15th or 16th birthday of Princess Aurora when she sees the fulfillment of the curse and also the counter softening. <laughs> and also the counter or sort of softening blessing that the lilac fairy gives of it she's not meant to die when she pricks her finger on that spindle but instead fall asleep for a hundred years so our music for this 16th birthday party that i like to use with children is around a theme of waiting and sleeping <laughs> that follows another big party so we'll have a 16th birthday party and then the apex where Aurora pricks her finger and falls asleep and the whole kingdom also falls asleep, the whole castle falls asleep after that. This track is one by Richard Maddock, who I love to use for creative dance and ballet classes. And it's called the Dance in Four Parts for Four. So there's several segments, which can be nice for telling pieces of a story, in this case, falling asleep and then being awoken again. Here we hear perhaps time has passed, maybe the thorn bushes and the roses are growing. You can bring it up how you like, but it's nice to have these musical quality to bring various scenes to life. I also like to do a theme of waiting and patience and the difficulty that we find with that, but also the necessity in life and how there can be rewards at the end of some waiting processes. So I have a song by Jack Grunsky, who's also fantastic for younger dancers, all about waiting. In this case, it has to do also with waiting for spring to come. So it's really fun to do Sleeping Beauty sort of in the spring as things have been sleeping and are once again awakening. And this is about waiting as the seasons change and seeing that transformation. It's a piece of children's waiting music. For spring to come, but one that flowers reaching for the sun. Or I'm waiting baby. to hear first Robin call. Kind of sweet. You can do bird themes. Waiting the Robin. for daffodils for morning glow. Flowers growing. And watch the caterpillar crawl. Insects and crawling. Wait for clouds to drift clouds on by. Weather, See a rainbow rain, in the sky. Wait for these for changes of weather that would be happening over the course of a hundred years. Waiting of for sleeping beauty. Wait. Smell honeysuckle in the breeze. I'm waiting for spring surprise. Optionally, you may want to share a bit about Prince Florimond and how after the hundred years have passed, then the lilac fairy presents him with a vision as he is walking it through the forest and he is led then to the castle covered in thorns and is the first and only person to make it through and to find Princess Aurora sleeping and bestow on her that kiss. So it can be fun also to share a scene of the lilac fairy imparting this information and coming to him as a vision. So with the wedding scene, we can take it in a classic direction with showing some various 
interpretations of this tale, including using Disney music or music from other interpretations that you know of. There's a lot of wonderful, of course, iterations of Tchaikovsky's Sleeping Beauty music. So one classic waltz that would be perfect for the wedding scene or other scenes from Sleeping Beauty is this one. <laughs> Very exciting, very triumphant, high energy, great for balance and waltzing and jump. Of course, there are many other variations which I mentioned before that we can also teach to older dancers, more experienced dancers, such as our Puss in Boots variation, or the Bluebird, or the Lilac Fairy. These are very technical, but can also have simplified versions that are lots of fun and a great way to connect to the storytelling of classical ballet. The tracks I'm about to play are created by Megumi Kopp, who also plays with the West Hawaii Dance Theater, of course, my home studio in Kona. And she has given me permission to use music in my videos, which is really nice. I can play a little bit of these tracks and you can find them on her recordings on Spotify or iTunes or many other places where music is sold. They're great for ballet class. This one is The Bluebird. like a bird. I believe it actually comes from the ballerina birdies recording or artist that she created. Great for all ideas. And here's a fairy solo. It sounds very magical and light and fairy -esque. of some of the various ways that Sleeping Beauty has been told, particularly in dance, and how we can use the music in our own dance education and ballet um, appreciation has been really rich for you and enjoyable. Please let me know by liking the video uh, down below, subscribing to the channel. That will let you know when my next creations are coming out or even better join my weekly email newsletter which brings joy and resources to your inbox every single week at ablythecoach.com that's a b l y t h e c o a c h dot com at some point there's a frog ah yes <laughs> 